The state puts all of Southern California in the purple tier. What this means for us in San Diego. More encouraging news tonight in the fight against COVID-19. What Moderna is saying about the late stage studies of its vaccine. Fighting back against purple tier restrictions. We'll hear from San Diegans who say no more lockdowns. PPE is protecting us from COVID, but it's causing a problem for Mother Nature. A public forum to reveal how often local law enforcement is helping ICE officials. The changes this year to make sure more people can participate. And he had a long wait before he found a home. We check in for an update on Charlie the Mastiff. News 8 starts right now. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Barbara Lee Edwards. I'm Carlo Cicchetto. Another huge surge of COVID-19 cases being reported in the county. 833 new cases reported today. That's the sixth consecutive day of more than 600 new cases. And as News 8's Brandon Lewis reports tonight, the spike in numbers is not just happening here. Now, Carlo and Barbara Lee, another sobering day for our coronavirus cases as San Diego continues to set records for our case rate. Of course, all this comes as the state has placed all of Southern California in the purple tier. It's simply without precedent in California's pandemic history. State and local health officials continued sounding the alarm over the growing number of coronavirus cases. San Diego posted its highest case rate of the new wave and the most single day cases over the weekend. Given the slope at which our cases are increasing, we can expect to see uh, further increases in hospitalizations in the coming weeks, which is why we have to take action now. This chart shows our case rate since the pandemic began, and we could be on track to surpass our record set over the summer. Health officials continue to urge San Diegans to stay at home, wear a mask outside, and practice good hygiene. We are in uh, an, an emergency situation. COVID-19 is not uh, going away. You are taking action not because I ask you to do so, but because the different entities that comprise the vital fabric of our community need you to take action, and it's just that simple. 94% of Californians are now in the purple tier, including all of Southern California. Health officials say it could stay that way for weeks. Hopefully by the end of December, we are seeing rates come down and we can get back to that forward movement in our tier system. Both the state and county continue to emphasize voluntary compliance, but say they're prepared to intervene. San Diego issued cease and desist letters to 10 businesses that refused to follow the rules. It called on incorporated cities to help, although some politicians declined. We certainly hope that uh, the elected officials throughout San Diego County would realize that this is a very serious situation we find ourselves in and basically abide by those things that they were sworn in to, to uphold. The state would not rule out the possibility that we could see additional restrictions beyond what's already included in the purple tier at some point in the future. Our case rate will get calculated again next Tuesday. Carlo and Barbara Lee. All right, Brandon, thank you. There was another huge number of reported COVID cases today, just today after seeing nearly 1,100 cases, the highest single day total yet. Today, there were 833 new cases confirmed out of almost 15,000 tests. That's about a 6% positive rate. It's also the second highest single day total so far. No new deaths were reported, which is typical for a Monday. Hospitalizations are up over the last two weeks, and county leaders are worried that it could get worse. They're asking everyone to do their part and follow public health orders. More encouraging vaccine news tonight. Moderna says early data shows its vaccine could be 94.5% effective at preventing COVID-19. Moderna's announcement comes just one week after competitor Pfizer announced its vaccine appears to be highly effective. Both companies are on track to apply for emergency use approval from the FDA within weeks. If approved, there could be 70 million doses available by the end of the year between the two companies. Local doctors help test the vaccine here, and we'll hear from them in our next half hour. Some local business owners are rallying against orders to close. They say businesses not responsible for outbreaks should be allowed to stay open. They're appealing to the governor and the county. As News A's Steve Price reports tonight, they're also getting support from at least one county leader. Frustrated that we've been pushed back into the purple tier again. San Diego County residents rallying today outside the county administration building with one main message. No more lockdowns. Open. 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 A chant to reopen the state 
by business owners and employees who haven't had much to cheer about lately. People are craving socialization. Sarah Piha from Time Out Sports Tavern believes the state shutting down indoor dining is actually making the spread of COVID worse because she says it's pushing people to parties in homes. Those places, they're not wearing masks, they're not washing their hands, they're not serving food properly. So by being able to operate in a safe, secure, controlled environment, it will actually eliminate COVID spreads. We have businesses that are being punished despite not having the cause of the outbreaks. County Business. Supervisor Jim Desmond was one of the event's organizers. He says the shutdowns are hitting his constituents hard with thousands of jobs lost. He also says restaurants, gyms, and indoor church services are not super spreader areas. Instead, he points to the county's data, which shows over the past two-week reporting period, more than three times as many people have become infected in indoor offices and other places of work than in a restaurant or bar. And he says the mental toll is tearing families apart. Our drug overdoses in San Diego County are tripling. Rady's Children's Hospital has, been a, has seen a substantial increase in suicide attempts and physical abuse and sexual abuse. Desmond added that it's hard to follow the lead of state officials when they make what seems like baffling decisions. And to prove his point, he cited a specific example during a Zoom call we had this morning. Clearly, we're aiming at the wrong target. Right now, you can go to a strip club an indoor strip club, but you can't go to church indoors. This rally comes on the heels of the county reporting a record high of over a thousand COVID infections in a single day. But Desmond defends his position, saying the majority of those cases are 20 somethings with few, if any, symptoms. At the Embarcadero, Steve Price, News 8. The San Diego County shift back to the purple tier has some upset and frustrated that people choose not to follow the rules. Some took to social media to voice their frustrations. Supervisor Nathan Fletcher says he's just as upset and that the solution is simple. Wear the mask, avoid large indoor gatherings, physically distance from non-household members. And if, if we would all do that, then we wouldn't be in a situation where cases go from 200 to 400 to 600 to 1,000. One business owner says people have gotten physically abusive when asked to follow the guidelines and is calling for everyone to be considerate and respectful of each other. Separate prison sentences were handed down today for two brothers involved in the shooting death of a local Navy sailor. Edson Acuna was sentenced to life without parole. His younger brother, Brandon, received 13 years in prison. 21-year-old Curtis Adams was shot in October of 2018 when he pulled over on a freeway ramp to help a seemingly stranded driver. Adams was shot by Edson as soon as he got out to offer help and later died. Edson was convicted by a jury earlier this year. Brandon had pleaded guilty. Adams was a Brooklyn native working as a steel worker at Naval Base Coronado. Today, President-elect Joe Biden called on President Donald Trump to begin the transition of power process. This comes with the president continuing to spread false claims that he won the election, even as more members of his own party are calling him out. Michael George is in Wilmington, Delaware, with more. Thank you very much. While laying out his plans to fight the coronavirus and rebuild the economy, President-elect Joe Biden gave a stark warning on the lack of cooperation from the Trump administration. More people may die if we don't coordinate. President Trump is still blocking the transition of power, tweeting Monday morning, I won the election. Hospitals are overflowing, mm -hmm. people are dying, and our ec economy is collapsing. And the president is tweeting all day and night about beating Joe Biden. The president's own national security advisor is signaling his readiness to begin the transition process. If the Biden-Harris uh, uh, ticket is determined to be the winner, and, and it's, you know, obviously things look that way now, uh, we'll have a very professional transition. President-elect Biden's COVID advisory team is planning consultations with vaccine manufacturers this week as they plan a pandemic response without cooperation from the Trump administration. Meanwhile, a U.S. defense official tells CBS News the Pentagon expects President Trump to order a reduction of U.S. troops by half in Afghanistan and by 500 in Iraq. A rapid withdrawal of U.S. forces from Afghanistan now would hurt our allies and delight, delight the people 
who wish us harm. Defense officials say the move could destabilize both countries. Michael George, CBS News, Wilmington, Delaware. President-elect Biden says that while he is still not receiving daily high intelligence briefings, Vice President-elect Kamala Harris is as a member of the Senate Intelligence Committee. Coming up, the first king tides of the season arrive on our coast. Plus, an explosion that was caught on camera at one of the world's most active volcanoes. There was a lot of heat across the southwest earlier today, but we're now seeing temperatures get into the 60s as well for downtown at 67 degrees, 73 in Palm Springs, 80 degrees in Phoenix. It was hot. I'll let you know just how record-breakingly hot it was coming up. I was worried and scared, definitely. First, a rescued hiker who was brought back to life by doctors shares his experience.